when I get attacked, I become stronger. Like that monster in the movie, every time you attack it because you're doing the wrong thing, all of a sudden it gets stronger. Every punch, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what an anti fan could do for your fan base and make them love you more than they already do because they don't have any reason to defend you. But once I get forced to choose a side, now I gotta mentally pick. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you stream your podcast, chopping it up here at the intersection of commerce. And creativity, creatives get that bag. And hey, if you bought that bag already, don't let people block your creativity. We are about no labels. And today we got we got some topics for y'all. Got some definitely got some. Topics. We're talking about building the anti fan. Yep. Every artist should have anti fans, maybe on different levels. But we're going to tell you exactly what an anti fan is, and we're going to break down four four artists who have used anti fans significantly as a part of their rise starting with the old school it's funny i'm calling this man old school <laughs> you stay tuned to see who that is and get into the new school but first what the hell is an anti-fan well y'all know what a fan is right we don't got to talk about that an anti-fan is someone who feels just as strongly as a fan about you except they on the other side of the fence they hate yeah. your ass yeah that is an anti fan. Or really dislike. They really dislike. Mm. Yeah. Or really strong dislike. Strong dislike. Yeah, it's like yeah. that uh that test you take, strongly agree. Yeah. Or, or just agree. disagree. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. That's what you want to build. You want to build some of these anti fans. Now, how are they beneficial? Why are they beneficial? Well, let's get into the examples and then we're gonna give some 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 deep information on like how scientific this is in between. But let's start with this guy, Drake. Aubrey? Aubrey. He okay. went to the old school, man. Okay. Back in the day. Okay. When Drake was on the rise. Mm -hmm. And he was this, uh, you know, fresh off the TV show. You know, freshly signed to Young Money. Having this music. And people were like, yo, this dude is soft. Mm -hmm. Who is this rapper? Uh, he doesn't represent the gangster rap that is still popular and meaningful where people were in a culture still thinking that rappers especially to be taken seriously and be considered a part of that goat conversation in many ways and he wasn't even there yet he was just, this is just starting hey they, they felt like yo he didn't represent mm -hmm. he wasn't hard enough to listen to especially not because he wasn't like you know it's not like he was andre or even kanye where they weren't necessarily talking hood shit or uh or gangster rap, but he was singing. People didn't like the fact this man was singing. And he was singing about his feelings. Right. Yeah. And nobody had ever really taken a singing rapper super seriously. Not Drake level of singing, because we know Ja Rule did it. I was, yeah, I was right? We know Ja Rule did it. And then 50 made fun of him and then did it himself. Right? So that kind of created even partially the, the ground space to be able to make fun of him for that. But, and we know back in the day you had people like New Edition who were also rapping on their songs or whatever, but they weren't trying to be a serious rapper. And mm -hmm. it was just a different environment at that moment, right? It was just like cool to do. Yeah, it was yeah. like a cool thing to do because rap was like a new novel thing. Yeah, yeah. Drake, though. Nah, this man's trying to make us take him seriously as like one of them dudes. We don't like that. All right? We got a clip of one of the goats making some comments. What you about know, Drake? You like Drake? No. My man, <laughs> he didn't even say a little bit. He didn't even say no. That's my guy right there. No. No. That's why X is necessary no. in the game right oh, there. Man. Now, why don't you like Drake? I don't like anything about Drake. Mm -hmm. My, I, I don't like his voice. I don't, I don't like, I don't like what he talks about. I don't, I don't. I'll be trying to tell like his face. People. I might just let me shut up. I'll just stop right there. Oh uh, damn yeah. it, man. No, but listen, that's why but, DMX is necessary. You know why? Because right. you got these legendary hip hop. This, this is why the game has gotten so yeah. whack. You got legendary hip hop figures who just get these guys passes. Yeah. Who don't yeah. say anything. Who don't yeah, say it's okay. No dudes, nothing. It's okay to say, yo, this dude is whack. I think he's whack. It's okay to say that. It's too much politics. It's too much politics. You don't yeah. got to act like you like something for what? Yeah. So that's a clean and clear example of how a lot of older people felt about Drake. And he was one of the first artists that I felt like a lot of old people went hard on in that way, like collectively they gathered around him. Like it was usually like old generation versus the young generation. 
I don't like a lot of what that do y'all are doing the trap, but it was like a lot of people specifically came at Drake. The name kept coming up, right? Maybe because it was prompted, whatever. But like people came at Drake differently again, because it's not like uh, DMX just brought him up out of nowhere. Yeah. But it did create what the hate on the older side. It had some hate on the younger side too. There was a lot of younger people who were like, "Yo, this guy is soft." But then there were people who were like. I like this guy. Mm-hmm. And the hate from the older people and the younger people that didn't like Drake or approve of him created more love for the people that already loved him. Yeah. And that's the beauty of an anti fan. Yeah. 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 I was I was one of them. You were one of those people? Not an anti fan, the, the the fans that uh, was a like, super fan of Drake. Yeah, yeah, fighting on either way. Hey, like uh what Zach mentioned that he had a homie mm-hmm. that everybody called him soft because he liked Drake. I had a homie. That everybody called gay because he liked Drake and he like leaned into it or whatever. Yeah. It was a thing with Drake. Yeah. That was a very clear thing. But the anti fan is real. So let's even get into the concept of it all. So I'm going to pull up a definition because what this basically is using is anti fragility as a concept. So anti fragility, that's anti fragile. What's the definition of anti fragile? Wikipedia says, you know, the Bible of everything. Anti-fragility is a property of systems in which they increase in capability to thrive as a result of stressors, shocks, volatility, noise, mistakes, faults. I'm going to repeat that. Increase in capability to thrive. To clarify that, I'm going to say that even simpler. Anti-fragility goes beyond robustness. It means that something does not merely withstand a shock, but actually improves because of it so what does that mean when i get attacked i become stronger like that monster in the movie every time you attack it because you're doing the wrong thing all of a yeah. sudden it gets stronger every punch it gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah yeah that's exactly what an anti-fan could do for your fan base and make them love you more than they already do because they don't have any reason to defend you but once i get forced to choose a side now i gotta mentally pick yeah, and you got to think deeper than you might have I gotta thought think about deeper. Because the hate or love, either way, you got to come yes. prepare, you know. Why yeah. do I like this person that much? Yeah. Why do I care what put me in a position that I want to try to defend them? And in that process, they're convincing <laughs> themselves of every single thing that you can't even do because yeah. you can't go that deep. That's what an anti-fan can do for yourself. Drake wasn't trying to make that happen. He was just doing something really different. And the public trying to get rid of them, which often happens, right? When media tries to get rid of something and they attack it, they give attention to it. And then all of a sudden they have the opposite effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Another example, matter of fact, before we even get into that, we have a study from the Harvard business review that talks about miracle with mayonnaise, basically using this concept. Mayonnaise. Never thought we would be talking about mayonnaise when it comes to artists. And it reads, Make the most of a polarizing brand. Now, I'm going to just read this snippet from the article. As conversation starters go, what do you think of Miracle Whip? Probably seems unlikely. You wouldn't think many people have strong opinions about the slightly sweeter than mayonnaise sandwich spread. But when marketers at Kraft began researching shoppers attitudes toward the dressing, they found surprisingly deep emotions. It turns out that a substantial number of people love Miracle Whip and many others detest it. They ain't messing with it. In 2011, Kraft launched ads that sought to make virtue of the schism. All right. So they're like, yo, we found out people love and hate this thing. We didn't know people felt this bad about our brand. Who who knew people care so much about man? Who knew people care? And (laughs) And that's all you need to look. You care. And you hate me, you care. Yeah. Right? You, that's a ver- ver- version of care. How can we use this? So what did they do? The campaign used love them or hate them celebrities, including Pauly D from Jersey Shore and political pundit James Carville. Some people in the ads praised Miracle Whip's yummies, but one, no yumminess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's a yummy? <laughs> but one other but but one character said he'd break up with his girlfriend if he learned that she liked the dressing this is in your own ad why would you push this type of image out there 
you're creating a conversation. This is similar to that conversation that I've seen a lot of people talk about. I never quite understood these conversations or where it is, but there's like a big thing. Like, do you put pineapple on your pizza or not? Do you put pineapple on your pizza? See, people do that whenever that shit comes up. I'm just curious, man. Ah, bro, I just buy pizza. Bro. I just pepperoni. First of all, that's I'm pretty like very basic. Just give me pepperoni, I'm good. So no, I don't think to it. I've had it before. I worked at Pizza Hut at one point in my life. I didn't hate it, but it's not something I would. So I don't hate it. I'm I'm the person that you don't want to use in this polarization because I'm right in the middle. I just don't think about it. That's crazy. Are you a pineapple pizza person? Yeah, I love it. You love it. Yeah. It's See, something about hot fruit and, and and meat. You know what I'm saying? Just. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about it, Jacory? What is it? I don't it? know, man. I don't have the words to describe it the way I like to describe it. I'm not not advanced enough for that, but you know what I'm saying? Just all right, we'll hire Rick Ross to <laughs> to break it down. <laughs> all right, let's continue on to this article. Another said, I'd rather lick your shoe than try Miracle Whip. Oh. Miracle Whip is a polarizing product. The brand director, Sarah Braun, explained at the time, we're trying to own up to this fact. They want to own the polarity. That's exactly what you do. When people feel strongly, you want to own that position, lean into it, and make them feel something. Because if they don't feel shit, then you ain't thought of at all. And you get lost in the sauce of all these feelings for other people and things that they understandably hate or understandably love. Yeah. Those are the things that we think about and react to the most. That's it. Politicians use it all the time. I remember early on, I saw uh, Grant Cardone say this like in like 2014 or 15 or something. Like this is before, all. the point is this is like two or three years before uh, Trump like ran for the election. But he was, but Grant Cardone would always say, if I can get half of the country to hate me, then I could be the president of the United States. Because this whole thing was just like people should lean in and like market yourself. Who cares if like people are annoyed? Da da da. Mm. And then it was funny because I because he would say it all the time. And then one day, like Trump came and like really had was a, a case study for that. I was like, dang, hmm. I see what he means. <laughs> I see what he means, right? So the polarity is something that definitely could be uh, used to your advantage. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy don't forget the www or it won't work because jr gets into the details of looking at the data decisions that got made how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign this is real behind the curtains type of stuff so again go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash grammy if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself back to the video now we went from Drake. Let's fast forward into the future a little bit more to somebody else representative in that uh, demographic. With where I'm a dog. Fuck Chief Keith. Fuck Lil Reese. You hear me? I'm not gonna play this whole video, but this is six nine playing the well, it's a compilation of six nine talking to all these rappers and basically like call them out, cursing at them, F them, da-da-da, they not ish, all that type of stuff. And these are like popular rappers, particularly in like the street rap category, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Trying to call them out, tell them that they not hard, you know, for everything they love, et cetera. And that's obviously what someone wouldn't expect anyone to do, to quote unquote stand up against those people or go against those people. And he creates hate for himself. Mm-hmm. A lot of hate for himself. A lot of hate for himself. <laughs> That was just one thing he did, right? The other things he did would be just the trolling he would do to make people feel one way about him. And um, comments on social media. The comments on social media about certain groups. And he was pretty targeted, man. He was pretty 
it was weird. He was using like street gang culture to push himself up from a like positive standpoint. Like I'm using this to support uh, to support me. Like these people are repping me. And then at the same time, he was attacking other street people. So it was like he was using it on both sides, right? Like I'm gonna go hard on this demographic and make somebody and make them feel a certain way about me. Yeah, I mean, he basically made himself like the joke of that demographic, right? Like I'm yeah. the I'm a I am a caricature of it, and I'm gonna do these things a certain way, and I'm gonna make a, a joke of it. I always thought I always thought that was the the longer play, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was like, hey, I'm gonna make this whole thing look bad, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't give a fuck either way, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really in this shit. It's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at yeah, it from yeah. his perspective, but, but that's what made his his shit interesting, man. Like, cause six nine is really early. Like, you caught him early. He was kind of like a hardcore screamo underground. I remember you know what I'm that. saying meme. Like, he had like a bunch of viral memes about him. You know what I'm saying? Way before the street shit. I remember the first time I ever heard about him. Um, was back when I was managing that rapper mm-hmm. and we all went to New York and we were at a house party and I was talking to this girl and I was like, yo, put me on to some like, New York rappers. And she's like, oh, this is dude here named 6 9 And I remember when she played him for me and I went and looked at his, his Instagram, he had like 42,000 followers on Instagram. Three days later, I went back home to Atlanta and by that point he had like 180,000. Like, he was just like growing like fast as fuck. You know it was crazy. Um, and then, so I was there from the beginning to see like that brand that he was kind of putting out there. And then the brand that he started to put out, it started to make him pop and go mainstream because it was when he put out, um, was it Gummo? One of the first songs, one of whatever, one of the first songs where he is like, he had the trippy red shit. He started kind of being a little ganged up. Oh, yeah, but he came out with that first stuff, video yeah. that was just like, damn, like this is what he about to run with now. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, shit just kind of took from there. And I remember just I think thinking, it was Gummo, yeah. man, it's like, if you look at like a lot of six nines, like really early stuff, I mean, he was appealing to like Eastern European rap fans and like, mm-hmm. you know, like the kids in Russia that like to listen to American rap. You know what I'm saying? That, that was his demographic. And like, yep. he was doing good at appealing to them without that shit. And then once he hit that shit, it's like just all the mainstream started paying attention to him. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he kind of became what he was. So to, and, you know, going back to the, the theme of the episode, the whole anti-fan thing, we could argue, and I've seen a lot of people make the argument about 6 9 is, if we had stopped hating him early on, would he have become as big as he did? If we had just all, if we had just all been like, "Hey, bro, we're gonna ignore him and that's all look over problem, here." No, you can't get enough people to shut the fuck up. Yeah, you're right. That's true. It, it's most, hard. It's hard to get a lot of people. All to shut the these fuck up. issues <laughs> when people really say they want to cancel somebody or whatever, usually just ignore. Yeah, ignore. You ignore that indifference. That's what kills people. The energy that you give. Love or hate, that's gonna keep fueling that fire and make the monster bigger, bro. Yeah, bro. Love or hate is just the the, the same energy opposite of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah, but I mean, but it, it not, you can tell he knew that. You know what I'm saying? Like to your point, you know, and he doesn't do it as much now, which I think is good. But kind of the latter years of his his, I guess, the big point of his career, you could tell that he would just just do shit. You know what I'm saying? Just to rile back up, hey, bro. It's like, man, when people really like me or feel indifferent about me. Nothing's happening for me. When people hate me, like I get the whole world in my hands. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. everything goes the way I need it to go. So, you know, you look at that and go like, which way, which way are you going for? I'm going yeah. for the hate. You know what I'm saying? And I sent you this video of him the other day. Remember the video I sent you the other day? It's just crazy to look at now. Right? Um, yes. Yeah. All right. So 6 9 got beat up at the LA Fitness like a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. And he used that time to make a music video while he was in Mexico of him. It was almost like, Spanish God's plan it was kind of like the vibe I got from the video. You ever <laughs> seen the God's plan video? <laughs> okay, for the actual video, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. not the, the song. Yeah, not okay, the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. The video, the video yeah. yeah. The video was like Spanish God's plan, bro. Yes. Like, like God's plan to Mexico. True. You know what I'm saying? And just six nine being charitable, giving back to people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Looks like a really nice guy. And I sent it to Sean because I was like, Sean, look at the comments. And in the comments, it's a bunch of people in Spanish talking about how great of a guy six nine is and how amazing he is. And hey. You did that shit to them Americans. You ain't do that shit to us. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. being cool to us and we're gonna ride with. It. I'm like, man, this is why they do it, bro. Like they can just slip into it. It's like he's seen both sides of that. It's something about I mean, the American audience is like 90% hate, 10% probably love, right? Mm-hmm. Spanish audience is like the complete opposite. It's like 90% love, 10%, you know what I'm saying, hate. And so then I even think about someone from his viewpoint is like, man, 
maybe that's the strategy, bro. I, I build my hate fire over here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Fan that shit. I use that attention to fuel my love fire over here. You know what I'm saying? Fan that shit. And the result is that I'm still hot and nobody really understands why. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm still- that's it, bro. That's exactly what it is, though. But I say it all the time, man. <sighs> you have to, like, you have to build on both sides if you want to take advantage of it. You can't just have one side angry yeah. or one side loving you. And that's it. Yeah, there's nobody to defend you at that point. It has to be yeah. two sides because they then like passively grow you through their ang- anger mm-hmm. and arguments around you, mm-hmm. right? So then you don't have to do anything. You just, it's that, uh, what do they, throw that stone and hide your hands behind yeah. your back and dip, like yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. So like the perfect example I always use, like I did like this PR video series like early on in like, the, uh, like our first like iteration of Brand Man Network courses, right? And it was using, one of the examples was the Super Bowl, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, and Coldplay. Yeah. Great performance. I loved it. And then, you know, you go home, you know, watch, finish the um, finish the game, you know, go to sleep. Next day, oh, so many people think it's dope. So many people think it's dope. A couple of days later, there's this undercurrent started. People are mad at Beyonce. What they mad at Beyonce for? Oh, her Super Bowl performance. They mad it was so good. Like, what, like, what, what, I'm confused. <laughs> Next thing you know, they they talk about her outfit and her doing the fist and Black Panthers. Still, I kind of referenced this on that other episode. My unknowing self, like, I, I still just don't reference it and think of it that way because I don't think of that stuff negatively, you know, because my background, I'm still like a little confused. Like, okay. People are mad, Beyonce, oh, Black Panther stuff. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I forgot that. A lot of people look at the Black Panthers as, as terrorists and all that stuff. Uh, okay, cool. So, and it's the, like, I think mostly in that case it was like right wing. Well, no, it wasn't even just right wing. It, I just, let's just say white people in that particular case. Not the way things were polarized between races um, around that subject matter. Now, why do I draw the line that way? Because now I'm observing. And I'm seeing some conversations. I see some hate comments, you know, about Beyonce. But of course, they go beyond Beyonce and start talking about the whole race and people. And it's like, dang, bro, like, hold up. Now Mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel something. I'm not going to engage online, but I'm like, this is crazy. And now I'm paying attention. I'm aware. What's the point? I'm somebody who saw the performance, enjoyed it. Cool. Keep moving. To the point, I'm not overthinking it. Think of the berets or any of her outfit, you know, if I'm really paying attention, I might know, oh, yeah, that's a nod to such and such. But, you know, other than that, just keep moving. Mm-hmm. But once you have these other people who hate, they're feeling some things in their bag. But that's not enough for them just to 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 hate. Right. And be in their little echo chamber. You have to connect the dots and let the people who love find out about the people who hate. And now you got war. Mm-hmm. And now we can get this shit popping. And the conversation goes from, oh, yeah, I love this. I love that. To this massive conversation that gets way more media, free media and attention mm-hmm. than it would have gotten by itself without any type of polarization. So I always try to remind people, you need to strategically make sure the sides meet at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, you can fake hateful comments and then <laughs> like you know we really want to get to how yeah. some, some of this shit really works yeah. sometimes people will fake like hate and create fake comments and things like that and then show it to the side that loves them mm-hmm. right or sometimes people will show something that is with that uh that people that would hate something but it didn't happen for them to be aware or they'll just create that and make sure that those people that hate it see it mm-hmm. right and fan that flame because when you think about it yeah, things are free, access is everywhere, things get millions of views, but we're so segmented today. This thing could happen. and We're in our own bubbles. The people who hate it, it's not for them. It's never going to algorithmically rhythmically get to them in a lot of cases, unless someone manually connects the dots. So, so are you saying the hate is bringing us together? In a weird way. I don't think that's the point of it. <laughs> it's bringing us together to create more hate. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, shit. Well, well it, brings it, the, it brings the two sides of the audience. No, 1,000%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,000%. It brings both sides together. And you have to have that to create the conversation that which becomes your marketing campaign. If you're using this strategy. Yeah. All right. And it's a scary strategy for many people to use. I would say even if you're not. I think it's I, th I think like we're using extremes, you know what I'm saying, to, yeah. to illustrate the example. We're gonna get into softer yeah, okay. examples. All right, you're right, you're right. Let me step we'll back. Get into my bad, softer, my bad. Especially our last one. Yeah. Our last one's gonna be a pretty soft example yeah. of of this. But this third one ain't that really it's not really that soft. Lil Nas X. Oh, okay, no, yes, sir. yeah. He had a, moments of soft. Tough example, yeah. He, but, but to be fair, he had moments, right? Because so Lil Nas X example number one, people don't even think about this part as much these days. You referenced it, right? The country, yeah, music came out polar polarizing. Came out polarizing because is this song going to be placed on the country charts or not? Does it really v validate as a true country song? That's a pretty like soft like polarization in terms of the spectrum of things and belief systems and, and well, all these other things that get played around with. And the industry, because remember like what made it a, a big deal was the way like the country music industry was reacting to it, right? It's almost like exactly. they, made, they made such a big deal about it. Like people who weren't paying attention to country were like, oh no, like what's what's going on over here? You know what I'm saying? Like we got to mobilize for this young man and, and help him get past yes. this big bad country giant. Exactly. So it's like that's a big boss to come out to have to the, to mobilize your fan base to defeat from the first single. You know what I'm saying? It created fun fan base. Yeah. No. 100%. Right. Like actually, so we talk about the anti fan strategy in terms of the fan of the artist, but at that moment it was just the song, damn near. Yeah. You're right. And then created extra attention to then create fans for him. So you had the song that's moving. Ooh, nice hit. Pop it on TikTok and online, mm -hmm. Twitter all that next thing you know it's moving but old town road could have very well just been another really good high performing you know online song mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then you know there's strategic things i don't know all of the strategic things that happened in terms of like you know of course he got signed pretty early on i think it was columbia but like a huge part of the media fire conversation was the country conversation and then we unfortunately know in our country shit gets really polarizing especially around race so the country conversation doesn't go just go oh is this especially a country song or not it starts there which i don't know like i'm not a country person so i'm not gonna like pretend like i should be the person who can validate whether it is or not but it creates that argument then you start having people see well country is a mostly white genre and then and then here's this black guy he has some hip-hop um, intertwined in this, but then you have a lot of the hip hop in this black community saying like they're being unfair. So that becomes like the the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're not letting him in because he's black and it's more beyond more beyond the song. And both sides are kind of reacting back to that uh, back and forth, right? Because mm -hmm. then you do have some people, white people that are like, "Whoa, these black people trying to ruin our genre or get into that. We don't want to bring none of that over there." That media fire creates another storm that takes it to another level mm -hmm. and generates more energy. Then you have Billy Ray Cyrus, right, step in from the countryside to connect and show love, which creates another storm around it and it just goes and goes. Apparently, when Billy Ray Cyrus did Achy Breaky Heart, that wasn't accepted. He was basically Drake, apparently. Yeah, yeah at the time, yeah. yeah. I, heard, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> like he kind of showed him some love out of that spirit or whatever. So, like that, like constant hate and constant polarization literally took levels because each one, each conversation might take you to another level, but it might not take you over the top. That one literally had three, maybe four or even five like polarizations as it went. Like, oh, even another one was because of the catchiness and simplicity at some point it was played a lot in schools. Oh, yeah, people thought it was a kid's song, exactly. Then people were like, yo, this ain't no kid's song, don't be playing this stuff. Da, da, da. So, like, conversation after conversation, hitting different community after different community, like, pausing right there before we even get into the other side of Lil Nas X's polarization. But there was a, um, I always go back to the this rock artist named Alice and his manager telling a story about how they leaned into and hate from parents. They actually, like, created the hate from parents and created stories about parents hating the um group and thinking 
their kids shouldn't listen to them, et cetera. So then the kids will listen to them and pay attention. Oh, yeah, because the parents want me to do it. So fuck it, I'm going to go do it. Now I want to try it out and see what's going on. It's smart. It's smart. It's smart, yeah. Right? It's all the anti-fan strategy, and you can do it from different ways. And, and again, that's a little bit safer in some ways than this other stuff. Because we know a lot of times the older folks aren't going to necessarily understand what the younger folks are doing at first anyway. Mm. Right? And a lot of kids are always going to find something to rebel against and just say, oh, I'm going to do the opposite just because. So lean into that. That's what I got. I thought of from like the little kids. But I mean, that, that, that shit was like bumping in like kindergartens and stuff. I remember <laughs> it was crazy. And when Bill and Grace Snow did get on that jump, it was hard. I was, I, I do. I was like, dang, this, this kind of goes. Not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> but then Lil Nas X takes it to the next level when he starts leaning into the anti fan against the Christian community. And Christian community is a very strong, specific community. That's what the country community was a strong, specific community. That's the thing. It's very hard to just make uh, to get to get benefit from getting hate from a community that doesn't have enough power to mobilize against you mm-hmm. like in, in some level of voice like cool you get the hate but it's not as strong of an anti-fan right drake with the hip-hop right having this old guard who yeah. has a media you know a microphone to speak and say i hate drake or i want to continuously like discredit him and create that narrative that works yeah. because it's out there. Yeah. But so the Christian community is very specific, has a very, very strong voice in this country. But we're talking about a down period where less and less people are for Christianity, for religion and things like that. So they're not at the height of their powers. They still got the brand awareness, but not at the height of their powers. So we just look at it like strictly from that standpoint. So it's a good time to attack. Yeah. Right. Um, and he's not the first person to to do that, but you know, damn near every time it happens, like the like clockwork, the reaction, <laughs> everything goes um, the same way. And you know, he went extreme with the devil stuff, and then he did the the, the, the blood in the shoes, anti fan, anti fan, anti fan, right? And was beautiful in terms of how an anti fan strategy can work. Let's be honest, Lil Nas X was in a very, very difficult position when Old Town Road blew up. Because, I mean, you want to talk about one hit wonder, like you're talking about that. I think it was the most weeks in number one of all time. It broke that kind of record mm-hmm. 17 or something stupid or whatever. So, that, like, you're talking about stupid one hit wonder, possibly. You know, everybody's a one hit wonder until they become a two hit wonder and then keep, things keep going. So, he's facing this mountain to climb Mm -hmm. and it's from a pop perspective. It's hard to even get to that level without something that even hits on a pop perspective. So it's not a specific audience at that time. Like who is Lil Nas's fan base because of Old Town Road? It's too many people. It's too spread out. It's a great song, Mm -hmm. but there's nobody who identifies with him. Yeah. So the anti-fan strategy begin is a way that he started to get people to be fans of him specifically that weren't from a specific genre or community, but it was on a pop level of love and hate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's something that's beneficial for like people who are popular uh, on a certain level, especially musically, and you're trying to figure out, oh shoot, I don't have my fan base, and you're never gonna go into a super drama specific niche sonically, yeah. It's like, well, I got to at least figure out community that will love me for a different reason and hate me for a different reason. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's, it's beneficial. So he definitely benefited from that strategically or not, but it was a beautiful thing. And then last person we're going to get into, which he represents multiple examples, is La Russell. La Russell with the anti fan strategy. La Russell's anti fan strategy is what? Anti industry. Anti industry. Yep. Anti industry. This is a good narrative to take as the last like what take. since the dawn of Russ, so like since twenty seventeen. The, the, the dawn of yeah, Russ definitely was somebody who leaned heavy into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, but his whole narrative is basically that we're like, I am this artist that is outside but around the industry, making industry moves, doing it my way. Doing it my way. Essentially, right. Which like I said, is it is interesting to see because like I said, that narrative isn't like new, 
But it's always interesting to see who people would take take to with that messaging. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like what types of people they want to hear that from. Because it, it, it does seem to be the same type of person, right? Like we like to hear it from Russ. We didn't like hearing it that much from Chance the Rapper, right? We like hearing it from people like La Russell. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of who else kind of got burnt about it. And, and people that's really been burnt about it. But it's like the, <laughs> the message seems to like hit harder from like different types of It's the of brand. It's the, it's the brand, yeah, and approach. Mm. Chance had a more commercial, nice guy mm -hmm. approach, and he did like lean into it from an encouraging standpoint. But like Chance and La Russell have like the Rebel Rouser, I'm gonna fuck shit up type approach. People love yeah. that idea of it, and they're like more boisterous in their like the way they talk, etc. Like where Chance wasn't doing that. He you know he would say that in, like a little bit of hair. And there he would catch his bag and pat himself on the back. But that just wasn't his brand. He was family yeah. friendly, Kit Kat commercials, yeah. still playing, especially a lot of like pretty industry stuff too. Exactly. And that, that's what I think it is, is, right? It's like Russ, La Russell, their messaging is kind of like, um, Indy and fuck the industry. Mm -hmm. Right. The message that a lot of artists can get behind. Mm -hmm. Chance's messaging to me was just like, oh, I'm Indy. Exactly, because <laughs> fuck anybody wouldn't be his brand. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Kind of, you know, it's yeah. just too clean, yeah. to come that hard. So it's still not Paul. It's just like good job for you, type exactly. Of thing. Versus like Russell, Russell kind of paint theirs as, as like, hey, my success is almost an antithesis, antithesis. Yeah. There we go. God damn. To what the industry is trying yep. to do. You know my like? game is another. Like L for them. L for them. Yeah. Another kick at the knees, yeah. chopping them down. But when they win, they're coming at me. These people, these things. That's abstract. You can't find necessarily the, the person in a lot of cases. Like they will they will find specific um, things to bring up. But like you can't find, you know, the the industry is there's a lot of different people. It's made it a lot of different, you know. So it helps to have that that thing to go against because it clarifies how and why you're rooting for these people, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody wants to see the story, the underdog story. I always go back to Gary Vee, bro. Like the genius of being the underdog when you already rich as fuck by saying, I want to get the Jets one day and I'm not there. Mm -hmm. Like I'm rich, but I'm not rich, rich. Well, actually I'm rich, rich, but I'm not rich, rich, rich. Yeah. <laughs> you know I what I'm saying? Some, I got some more I still got hundred some millions more. I can make. What does Kanye <laughs> do again and again? Like find a way to say, Oh, these people are holding me back. I'm trying to get in that ceiling. They won't let me in the store. They won't let me be a part of their manufacturing or whatever, whatever. Like they won't let me be on the board, right? Yeah. And always finding something. And typically, it's people that other people don't necessarily even know in terms of the fans he's talking to. Like, so he kind of plays that strategy, the yeah. anti-establishment. Like that's their anti-fan strategy. All the people we just touched on. Yeah. Right? It's anti-establishment, yeah. and and the establishment, the beauty of it. Because again, a lot of times you're talking to fans about people they don't know, so the fans are just gonna be on your side. Because I don't even know who these other people in these corporate offices, yeah. right? Artists lean on that stuff a lot when they talk about their managers or label and people, and sometimes it's not even a label, people fault fault or whatever. But it's a it works and it works well because there's also like, why well, why am I gonna jump off the roof, right? It's like, hey, you just say, I don't know, let's just say we got a label and it's me, you, and I don't know. 20 other of us or whatever. Oh, that's that's still too small. A little bit too more communal. Let's just say the industry, like, but it's a big, a whole uh, huge amount of us. And you're just saying labels, labels are the industry. Like, well, why am I just going to jump off the roof mm -hmm. and then put myself in a line of fire and make it seem like that person's talking about me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to get in, in that fire. I don't know who he's talking about. Is he, is he talking about Corey? Was that about me? Like, like it doesn't make sense. Now, the wrestle talked about, what is it? Rock Nation, Ration, Nation, yeah. Jay Z, that whole situation. Bo, yo, the industry's trying to mess me up. Why would you give me a, that type of deal based on the type of shit that I'm doing and, and what I've already achieved? That doesn't make sense. I'm just here trying to do good business. That's narrative right there. Yeah. I'm trying to do good business. Like, continue to say, like, hey, I'm just trying to do good business, good business, good business. Well, all the wrestlers trying to do is do good business. Like, why would you not want to do good business? That's how, that's the political, like, hey, I'm, he, he might not be doing it um, like strategically. 
it might just be natural for him. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, because he does have a natural a level of gift of gab that you can tell yeah. um, where things just hit. But it's the same thing as like progressive, progressive. Well, who doesn't want to be progressive? You know what I mean? Pro-life, pro-life. Who doesn't want to be pro-life? Who doesn't want to be pro-choice? Like, there are things that just sound good and then you imply the other side doesn't want that. Dang, they don't want to do good business? Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't they want yeah. to do good business? Right? So, creating that perspective and that thing to go against, like, as we already said, again and again, helps rally the troops around you. and Because people want to feel like they're part of some shit, bro. They want to feel like Yo, I can impact something and do something and I can vote for president, but damn, man, it's so many people. I don't know if I really made an impact if my vote took the scale or not, but damn, this is a Russell dude. He's on the rise. I can hop on this train early and be a part of growing this thing. You know what I mean? I know that I have an impact because he's small. He's indie, right? And that's what the indie brand like is. Like, yeah, they, they need me to succeed per se from a fan selfishness standpoint and whether or not i believe in the vision and everything else um that's going on around them and but russell does that beautifully bro yeah no i agree i agree like it's the, the whole like anti-industry narrative i think is done a lot but you very rarely see it done well right because it's like you yes. have to be to your point you got to be able to talk to talk but the walk that we see you walk alongside that has to Right. line up right which is why it hit so hard with Russ which is why it does hit so hard with um La Russell which is you know like I said I think why I hit hard with Chance right he was all artists who like were walking in talking walking in talking and talking at the same I time I think La Russell is doing it the best that I've seen oh uh-huh. number one top two and ain't two yeah top two <laughs> and ain't two like in terms of that as a whole like holistically now whether he ends up with the same level of success musically or number of fans, things like that, but just holistically, because not only is he doing the anti-industry narrative, right? Laying into that, he has the self-promotional mouthpiece where he can talk himself up, get the gap, that whole thing, Mm -hmm. right? Check. Hustle approach where he capitalizes on it, you know what I mean? Monetizes on it because those people who do it the best, so you got to have that, because some people just talk, 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 but they don't really have the hustle to, like, move and cap off of it, Mm -hmm. right? And then, beyond that, when you think of Russ, right, and going up against the industry and how he moves, what do you think of? When I think of Russ going up against the industry and how he moves, what do I think of? I think of, like... I don't know, man. It feels kind of like the, like the big. I don't know. It, it still feels kind of industry. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like because it's, 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 it's certain holes or gaps in the story that haven't. You been don't really filled, feel like yeah, right? I haven't been filled. Haven't yeah. been filled. Yeah. Bam. Part of my point. Um, like we already know, we already took chance out because he doesn't really have the anti fan thing like that. Um, so let's just do Russ and La Russell in this example. Uh, even though there's more we can get get back to, Kanye obviously does it very well at a high level. But we're just like like this Indian newer age. So, La Russell, he's capturing the story along the way from the yeah. early yeah, documenting, yeah, yeah, that documenting, right, and showing where he is, showing the more humble beginnings than where he's about to be or where he's trying to go, and then building community. Russ ain't build community. That's, mm-hmm. No, no. Um, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a community. It doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of fans that fuck with him. But I'm talking about like hardcore, touch and feel, community, community, where you know why, like, we can show up and we all know why we're here and there's a mission and vibe. That's why it's like more like J. Cole has a community at scale. And it's hard to even do that at his scale because J. J. Cole really started building his community after he was already big. And it's a little bit harder to do it that way. But no, he's like early on, very like building community, community. Doesn't I mean rest his head? No, nah, but not. Nah, rest did not. As a part know. of his story, he did not push any part of uh, like community. No, I can't say that, man. You can't say that Russ didn't push nah, the community? Nah. All right, what's the community? Like Russ's community, like he was kind of building was like, hey, we are the group of people that think anti-mainstream and kind of do what we want to do. No, no, I don't. I don't rock with it. 
Like he was he, he was, was talking directly to us. He, like he had Facebook groups and SoundCloud things that he did. Like he was very like I and I also think about it too because I remember when Russ was coming up as an artist. Yeah, I was in college uh-huh. and I had this blog that I used to run and I remember Russ would comment on the post that I would make from the blog. I, used to, I remember thinking time like it's crazy like he literally pays attention to like everybody and everything that talks mm-hmm. about him. Uh, and this is pre what you want. This is pre like him pop. This is just like you know. Russ was is extremely savvy. Don't let me like. Don't make it seem like I don't appreciate his strategy and he wasn't sharp at what he does. That's why he's in this conversation. I'm just saying in that specific way, no, I don't think he built community. I think he was a a part of community or like commented, created presence in community. But like to me, like like doing the thing like the uh the pay what you what you want or whatever, the uh, restaurant because he's already sh- so it's, it shows all these different things that you stand for beyond the anti-establishment mm. like Rus- La Russell's community yes like you start because of La Russell and who he shows himself to be or like maybe some people came in because of his music and maybe some people like first noti- notify uh, learn about him through like the anti-establishment messaging and mm. interviews like that but it's very clear when I look Outside of that messaging, there's like shit that people believe that are there together beyond that, right? That aren't just artists, that aren't just dudes. It's this place for men and women that mm-hmm. could feel comfortable like around in that community. And he shows the community and he shows, and part of that, like he shows team. But Russ didn't really show team like that. Not true either. Yes, it is. He's, he's, I, he had, it he doesn't had. mean he doesn't have team. <laughs> he had team from the very beginning and I watched it. It wasn't a part of his narrative. Russ, Russell had like his team gets interviewed. How many people on his team get, uh, get That's interviewed? That's what I'm saying. Like, but Russ had like the two or three main members of like Demon with him, like Boogus and the other dudes. Like, yes. they, they was like in all his early content. They was on yes. a lot of his early interviews. But it, all right. So I think this is what, why, and I don't think, and I don't use it against him. I just think partial part part of it was being a different era. Yeah. People weren't paying attention to it like that. Yeah. So he would have had to do different stuff to build community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but like even uh, I think I'm sorry I can't remember her name. I, I don't know if it's just T or TT. What's her what's her name? The L- Russell's like right hand. Oh, woman. the the girl, the edit, I don't know her name. Yeah, but yeah, woman, not a girl, man. You savage. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, but uh, <laughs> nah, she uh, but like. Like talking about, oh yeah, she has ownership. Oh, she's dope, bigging her up and da da da. And again, this isn't any slight at Russ. It's just I'm saying when we have to split hairs that why he has why Russell has done better in this category. If we look at textbook, I think he's checked more boxes in terms of the anti fan strategy and building like an entire uh ecosystem. That people can rally around. Well, and that's the only space I would give it to him is like he got to touching the people in real life faster than Russ did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but like Russ still did. Like Russ was building community. That's what I'm saying. I can't say that. I can't say like watching like. All right, he built what? it slower. He just didn't build it as well. I still can't say that. Like you tell if 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 Russ were to tweet about. Not even tweet, just put like I'm doing some little thing here today. Of course, he got fans. That's Everybody can do that. No, that's they not got true. fans. That's not true. They got real fans. But that's, that's but, what a fan but, is. But that's how we gauge who has real fans by the community. No, real fans and community are different. Community, like that means I fuck with you because we represent the same thing, and we already know what we're here for. We can vibe just off of that. Fan is I fuck with this artist. We might both be here because I fuck with this artist. Not necessarily because we represent this world of things to be a part of and we like automatically connect beyond just the artist itself. There's other values and things that come into play. Yeah, well, we said real fans. Real fans, there's that distinction. Like real fans are typically people we consider to be a part of the community. Like like I don't consider someone who is cool, likes the artist's music, but isn't a part of the community. I don't consider them a real fan. You are a fan. You are a degree of a fan, but you're not a real fan. Because the real fan is in the world and no understands the world that the artist is trying to build. All right, how many? You really fucked with Jay Z growing up, right? Yeah. I'm sure you can think of some like some people who really fuck with Jay Z and you don't feel like they're in the same community. 
like are probably probably stronger fans than you. No, I really can't. Like I'm thinking about all right, the people. Maybe I, some of these old heads. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of all the people that I know that are like. Now, I know personally like, around my age that are like all like oh, so Jay Z fans. So you gonna block it to age? No, what do you mean? There are communities and communities. So you're like, talking about communities. Like, <sighs> like a you're like. Right. That's what I'm saying. That, are there are there not subsets? <laughs> <laughs> If there's a if there's a range of fans between the ages of twenty and fifty, it's like yeah, they're gonna be certain commonalities amongst us as a part of this. But the twenty to thirty year old demographic of that fan base is gonna have different cultural distinctions than the thirty to fifty year old demographic of it. All right, let's just run this back. <laughs> you already said the Russell has gotten to touching the people faster than Russ. Faster than yeah. Russ. Yeah. What was my point? You said he built a strong community. Yeah, we go at what gauge and point of your your existence, where he is pound for pound for community is greater than where Russ it was at this point. No, I can't say that. I don't even think it's possible (laughs) for Russ to have had that. Like it was just way harder back then. Niggas weren't putting content out. The content the content wasn't as frequent and even just spreading as much. People weren't on the social media like that. It wasn't as strong of a platform. He did a lot more physical stuff. Russ was out there like going overseas to shows and stuff and nobody even fucking know. Yeah. Like everybody knows the rest. La Russell is moving. Like it's, it wasn't even possible for Russ to like build community from a media perspective and have a media. Like La Russell has a full media brand, like a media company yeah. in his company. Right. Not just because of the good company stuff, like, but literally just because people can have these separate companies, like, but no, literally the production, uh, consistency of content, consistency of sim- and simplicity of narrative. Russ, he was, before he really got to build community, he had to use the fact that he was popping first. Like, and let the people know that he was popping and that created the media attention for him. And then he had the opportunity to start building. Uh, but that's what I'm saying, because no, he he was building his SoundCloud community and his Facebook community before. Like the yes. big the big pop that's... moment for him was like, "What you want?" Like, "What but you that want?" That was around the music. What? What, what do you mean? I, I'm. You're saying, you're saying like the community around like the brand, like him in general. Everything. Yes, yeah. that's a full. I'm talking about a full. The whole point is being holistic. A full holistic community. La Russell. La Russ was more around music. Mm. Because again, it just wasn't even possible if we like to the same extent. It was very hard. If we want to go to some people who did it in their own way and did it more holistically and was closer to what uh La Russell and what he's doing, it would be more like odd future. They built yeah. community community where it's very clear that we're these type of people and some of these other things going. But I would argue they probably did it better than both in terms of community. Yeah. Anti fan, they had the anti fans. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was that but was, I don't. Very... I feel like their anti fans could have been stronger. They didn't have a because of the internet. They didn't did not having to deal with the industry as much. They didn't have to. They didn't get as much like pushback for who they were as they could have. Like it's it's like as they could have. I mean, I didn't Tyler, say they get, they didn't Tyler get got any. banned from countries, bro. Like. Yes, Tyler did it <laughs> specifically, yeah, yeah. right? I'm just talking about Arrow, them as Arrow, a whole. Got, yeah, yeah, Arrow. Yeah. But and Tyler had to like do that specific shit for the, you know, yeah. for it to happen. Yeah. But like look, but they were doing stuff. Russ and La Russell are like more against the end. Like they they used the narrative, right? And that created the pushback. And it was more industry, like blocking gatekeepers, all that. Tyler and them weren't necessarily using that narrative. It was just like, I'm gonna do some shock, shocking shit. And then you get banned and you hate me for that. Yeah. Right. And it was a different. And of course, as a result, it helps their fans like love them in some way. But it was it was a different thing. But yeah. they did build yeah. hella community. Yeah. That's a but that's a different conversation. I wouldn't call them full blown anti fans because it's weird. Like Tyler should have been more hated. He was hated, but he wasn't like the the media conversation about hating him was not out there as much as you would have thought it would have been because we were still at a point where we could kind of ignore the internet and then you realize oh snap this man been in the game this long this yeah. man did, like did, yeah. did x y and z you look up one day and it's like man he been for 10 years yeah, like, yeah. exactly and somehow he's <laughs> just floating being at a yeah. high level like a legitimate celebrity everybody knows him as successful like he 
his, that's a whole nother conversation, a taller conversation. Point is, <laughs> the, all these people did this strategy well, but Lil Russell, as of now, he's using the anti-fan and community combo better than anybody I've seen in the last, at least since Russ. Lil Yali. Not a chance, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. All right, man. Lil Yai was probably one of the first artists I've seen doing a lot of the in-person like community events. He had the, the fan pizza parties he would do. You know what I'm saying? The fan game nights that he would do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The media part, like, you know what I'm saying, wasn't really there. But to your argument, media was different back then. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But, but they just like, couldn't. But that's why we can't. I can't say, like, it's better because they were working with what they had. Like, at the rest of the time, all he had was Facebook groups and SoundCloud comments. And he was working them shits. He was they working did, them shits. They did better stuff. <laughs> like, they might have, but they their time brought advantages in other categories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The rest, was, I mean, like, Russ. Russ was able to take advantage of SoundCloud, get his streaming going crazy in a different way, and in a technically easier way, not that it was easy to do, yeah. but like easier and cheaper way, hacking the algorithms because it was easier to go viral musically back then and harder to go viral personality-wise, right, through content. Now it's easier to go viral through content and harder to go viral musically, especially like straight off the music platform today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you take what you get, like you know what I'm saying? Like, so they all maxed out maxed out their era. That's part of the problem. Like they had an argument in sports all the time. Like comparing eras, it's hard to just say there's a single goat that yeah. cast greatness across all eras, because every era comes with its only challenges. You're like, oh well, he did more than this. Well, like his team didn't ask him to do that. And he got these. Like, so that part, I'm not again, I'm not taking anything from him. I'm just saying, because of where he is and, and the time at this juncture. Of his fan base, he's done the best job. Now, I think I wouldn't call this person a, a anti fan strategy person, but they used all the elements. That's the crazy part about this person. He had the independent narrative, he had the um, community and mission based narrative that people could rally around, the mentality narrative. He did all these things, but he didn't necessarily. Like use the anti industry narrative because he had industry people and friends too. He just didn't make that decision till later on, and that's Nipsey Hussle. Okay. He had all that. You're right. What you gonna say? To no, I Nipsey? ain't got nothing to say. What you gotta say about Nipsey? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say, man. What you gonna say about Nipsey? <laughs> nothing, man. But he didn't use the anti. Yeah, he didn't. That's what I'm saying. I don't think. That's, he was... No, that's that's my point. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he's done the community. He did all these things with, but he didn't use that. And that's the interesting point about it, though. Cause I feel like like people be splitting hairs in comments, and I feel like the nuance and the reason to split hairs in the right way is because people are trying to compare shit that's not necessarily comparable when you like look at the definition of it's specifically of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think the cool shit that we did here was the Nipsey Hustle and the Chance the Rapper, people who are doing the same shit but didn't necessarily use the same narrative. Right. Yeah. In the same way, like you can have the elements, right? This, uh, but it's the move that you decide to make with it. You know, what is whether you go left or right. Like a lot of these people have the capability to use an anti-narrative or to use an industry narrative or to use X, Y, Z. You choose which box you want to open, and then you know, hop on in it. Yeah, personality plays a big part in it too, right? Like yes. it's, it's much easier to believe that. Nipsey Hustle was being held back because of his background, and it was to believe that Chance was being held back because of his back. Especially once like his background came out and people started learning about like his dad's history and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of like hurt. What know? do you mean by Nipsey being held back? Well, not held back, but like the whole like I think like the whole like anti I'm going against the the, oh, yeah, the yeah, industry yeah. in this way. It, it feels different when people come from different backgrounds. Like, oh, oh, for yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Nipsey's was more the Gary V route. Yeah, like. Just trying to achieve something big, not necessarily going against anybody. Like how Gary be like, like build the tallest building, yeah. become the Bills' biggest building instead of tearing something down. Yeah. Lil Russ and and Russes, they don't necessarily say tear that other building down, but some of the energy that's created in the fans, right, in the community, 
as a result yeah. it's still like because they because they create hate for the system yeah you know what i mean yeah like just like because you're like you're attacking my mans you know what i'm saying yeah. like so like fuck y'all right exactly <laughs> so i'm <laughs> so i'm attack the system whether it's intentional or not that's just just kind of the result of like again like just um how that narrative goes but yeah again i yeah, you, you never gonna get there with that Yachty <laughs> shit, bro. You never gonna get there with that yacht. Like, but he Yachty is a whole another beast for just how different he moves and how dope he is. But that wasn't a conversation for him. That wasn't a conversation. <laughs> but he did the fan piece of party. One hundred percent. He, he did, did a fan, fan piece of party. Party. He did more than one. He I, did like three. Hey. At a time, and because to the <laughs> point, <laughs> to the point of Russ again too, right? Russ's message was so interesting because of the time he was coming up in, right? It was like all these SoundCloud rappers. It was like, oh, it was the Smoke Purse, the Lil Yachty's, the Uzi's, you know what I'm saying? And then Russ over here. And if we look at the group that Yachty was in, he was the only one doing that type of shit. He was the only yeah. one building community about then. Yeah. Uzi wasn't building community. Kari wasn't building community. Oh, I agree. He was he was uh, mindful about it, intentional about Name the community who he represents. What is it like the the king of teams? I can't remember yeah. the name. Like, oh yeah, he was the king of teams. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, all that <laughs> different type of stuff. He was very mindful of it about community trying to be representative of something larger. But he doesn't fit the anti fan strategy for one. So we don't even need to get deeper into this. No, he had anti. He was the 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 one that the old heads could hate. No, he did have that. Yeah. He did have that. Yeah. He was the, the youth thing, the whole youth thing. <sighs> and that, okay, the crazy part about that with him <laughs> was he didn't have shit to do that. Yeah, you're right. That's true. These other people we talking about, like, were building their narratives. People were just hating on Yachty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the crazy part about that. Some very vocal people with platforms hated on Yachty, and then that just generated the the love from the people who loved him and, and all, all, all that stuff. So, I don't know. I guess that was like a lucky. Oh, lucky, no, hate. no, okay. I thought you said I thought you said I was love for calling it. I was like, nah, man. No, 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 no. I still don't think he fits it to the same <laughs> level because uh, I'm I'm looking at the intent intentionality of it. But Yachty was very Yachty's very good at having strategy, so actually having some strategy, and then using strategies that come become available because of what happens in the marketplace. Okay, I get that. Yeah, like, that's true. He's, he's, a good, a, he's a good reactionary marker. He's a like yeah. one of my favorite when it comes to brand <laughs> understanding and manipulating that. Like yeah. from jump, from jump. All right, let us know what y'all think, <laughs> bro. <laughs> About those points, done went them off, <laughs> off the rails, but valid and needed at the end of this uh, anti fan because I feel like still again that back and forth still clarifies what truly this definition of anti-fan is. Yeah. And all of y'all can use this in some way, in some capacity, because even throwing in a Yachty or people who had it in different, um, like who had it like, yo, this is my centerpiece or ah, just a little anti-fan work over here. You yeah, know you what hate I mean? me sometimes. Just a little rumbling about yeah. some like random old person hating on me or somebody who didn't let me in the uh, restaurant because they thought I didn't belong there, you know, just a little bit, just a little light work, you know. Basically, look out for these people to villainize in their life. That's basically <laughs> what you got to do. Like, oh, shit. Yes, it is. my hey. fans will hate you. That, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell them about this. Yeah. What's your name, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that is another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean, and I'm Corey, and we out. Peace.